Hello and welcome back to part two of our live look setup video. In this video, we'll be talking about how to create channels and how to set up our column management. Let's start with the channels. Usually you have as many channels as you have cameras on set and creating a channel starts by defining the image source. Now, if you're using a LUT box like the Teradek color, which cannot send frame grabs to live looks, you would choose a reference frame. Let me choose reference C. And as you can see, LifeLux now created this channel. I know that there's a Panasonic camera connected to my color LUT box. So I'll set this to Panasonic V gamut and V log. And instead of sending it to a monitor, I'll select my color LUT box here. So now every time I'm grading this channel, I will be remote controlling the Teradek color. Now, if you're using a TV Logic IS Mini or a Box IO, you can actually also choose LUT box capture. Let me choose my Box IO here. And now I'm looking at the live camera signal, which gets refreshed every so often. If we go to the LUT boxes tab, you can set the capture interval right here. Right now, it will update every five seconds. Again, the camera connected to that LUT box is a Panasonic camera which outputs Panasonic V gamut and V log, and the box IO is already selected. Now, lastly, I can group channels, like grouping both the A cam and the B cam into group G1. So, when I now grade the B cam, the A cam will be simultaneously graded with it, and vice versa. Alternatively to the LUT box capture, I can do an SDI capture. Right now, I can choose between IO4K input number one and two. To quickly recap, if we go to the monitors tab and to the configure SDI button, we have configured our IO4K to have channels one and two to be our inputs and channels three and four to be our outputs. Our outputs are showing up right here in the monitors list and our inputs are available for our channels. Let me choose input number one. Here again, I'll set the input color space to Panasonic V gamut and V log. And more importantly, I can select Panasonic in the metadata dropdown as well to have live looks read out the metadata from the SDI signal correctly. Now, instead of tying a lot box to this channel, I'll just output through output number three on my IO4K. Last but not least, let's create a reference clip channel and I'll choose this green screen clip here of which I know that it is in Rec 709. Send it out output number four from our IO4K. If I set the output for this channel to also use output number three on our IO4K, LiveLux will create a two of view and show both the B cam and the C cam side by side on output number three of the IO4K. Lastly, through the check mark icon here, I can disable any given channel. So if I'm shooting with two cameras today, but with three cameras tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow only with one camera, I don't have to delete the channels, I can just disable them and enable them whenever I need them. Now, if we hit OK and we bring up our great controller, we can see our three cameras, the A cam, the B cam with the live SDI signal. Let me quickly change the exposure to make this a little bit brighter and the C cam with our reference clip shot in front of a green screen. All right, back to our setup screen. And now let's talk about color management. Color management basically is defined by three things. The input color space, the working space and the output color space. As you can see, we have told LiveLux what the input color space is for each channel. Channels A and B have Panasonic V gamut and V log and the C channel has Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. Our working space is set to native which basically means that all of our grades will be based on the individual color space and EOTF of any given channel. 
So all the grades that we create for the A cam and the B cam will be based on Panasonic V gamut and V log. And all the grades we create for the C cam will be based on Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. Now alternatively, we can set the working space to, for instance, ACES. This means that LiveLux will look at each channel, read out the color space flag, in this case VGamut and VLog for the ACAM, and transform the image into ACES. Same for the B channel, and for the C channel, it will do an input transform from Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4 to ACES. So basically, all of our channels are unified in the ACES color space and all of the grades that we create for each channel will be based on ACES. Let's set this back to native. Now we've covered the input color space, which is set on the channel, and the working space, which is set here. The only thing that's left is the output color space, which applies to monitors and LUT boxes. Let's start with the monitors. Here I have my interface monitor and the split view, which is also on the interface monitor, and our two outputs from the IO4K, which are right now set to custom channel, which means that they respect whatever we've set up here in our channels list. Alternatively, output number three could show a video wall or always the active camera that I'm grading on. Now, as you can see, each device here in this list also has a color space and EOTF that we can assign to them. Right now, they all read source, which basically means there is no color management. No transform will be applied. If I hit OK and choose my B-cam here, you can see that we're looking at a very loggish looking signal. Panasonic V-Log, to be specific. However, if we tell our interface monitor to always show Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4, if I now hit OK, you will see that we are looking at a very decent and contrasty image. Back to our setup screen. Our split view is currently set to source, meaning that it should not transform the input signal into anything. So if we hit OK and we choose split, or dual view, you can see that we're looking at the log image right here in the dual view. And this way we can also configure the outputs of our IO4K. Let's assume that on output 3 I have a reference monitor connected that is calibrated to Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. On output number 4 I have an HDR display which expects us to send out Rec 2020 and PQ HDR EOTF. So this way I can send out multiple different color spaces to different displays. Alternatively, I can load a display LUT here. By clicking the three dots, I can load the LUT. With the R button, I can reset it. And with the A button here, I can enable and disable it whenever I please. LUT boxes have the very same settings. For instance, our Teradec color right here, which we have set up for our ACAM. We know that the ACAM is sending out Panasonic V gamut and V log, so that's the input signal that goes into the color. Now we can tell our color to please convert this incoming V log signal to Rec 709 because there's a Rec 709 monitor attached to that LUT box at the output. Same as with the display. The LUT box will now convert the incoming signal Panasonic V gamut and V log to Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. If for whatever reason we don't want that, we would just leave it at source. Or alternatively, load a display LUT. Now to quickly recap the three stages of color management. First, the input. We're telling LiveLux what the incoming signal is in the channel setup by setting the channel to V gamut and VLOG in this example. Next, the working space. If it is set to native, no transform is applied. If it is set to ACES or any other color space, the incoming signal will be transformed into that color space and all of our grades will be based on the working space. Lastly, 
Each and every display and LUT box have their own color space and EOTF setting, so LifeLux can transform either from the input or from the working space into the dedicated color space for any given display. At any time, LifeLux allows me to do input and output transforms either using the built-in color management or my own lookup tables or both in combination. This is it on creating channels and setting up color space management. I hope this was useful to you and see you next time. Bye!